this is a little story I want to tell you about about a big blue boar. Uh, musters are heading out to to Knockenbar one day to start the muster. Uh, I think it was the shearing muster. And um, the musters used to get away before me, so they get a bit of a start on me and get away and, and, and so forth. And I was always the last to leave with the pack team. I would make certain that the horses would settle down and all the straps were tightened up and and so forth, and eventually I got going about a half an hour after the last of the musters set off on foot, because all of the musters at Mount White, it was all walking, they didn't muster on horses at all, there was no horse work as such when you were out the back. But anyway, we headed away and uh, the pack horses picked their way up through the zigzag track and up to the top and we were heading up the, up the Esk um, River, following the river up. And um, we'd gone about three quarters of a mile, uh, three quarters of an hour, and I come around the corner with a lot of scrub and bush and stuff, and there was squealing and pigs squealing and dogs barking, and I could hear fellas roaring and so on. I rode on a little bit, and my pack team, they were a bit startled by this, and they went up the hill and got past, cycled past this commotion that was going on, and when I got around the corner, I got off the horse and I walked into this little bit of a clearing and Sylvie Eaton, one of the musters, had this bloody great big blue ball by the hind legs like like a person with a wheelbarrow and I said, what are you doing? He said, what the hell do you think I'm doing? I said, well, you've got a pig. He said, of course I've got a pig. He said, have you got your bowie knife on you? And I said, well, is the poker Catholic? He said, well, don't be bloody stupid. If this pig gets away, it'll be the end of us. All of us. We're all dead and they'll be it. I said, well, I'll give you the knife after I've taken some photographs. He said, no, no photos. I said, oh, well, no photos, no knife. He said, well, go on then. So I got this camera and got right down close by this pig and he was munching and snarling and frothing coming out of his mouth and, ooh, he was having a go at me. And Sylvie even said, if you don't get a move on, we'll be a packman short, so shape up. And I said, just one more picture. So I gave him the, I gave him the knife and Sylvie just reached over and took the pig over to one side and, well, we, the rest is history. And I said, where's Rob Abbott? He said, oh, he was here before. And I looked around and dogs were barking and, and everything like that. And I said, you're there, Rob? And he said, yeah, I'm over here. And I said, where? And he was halfway up a birch tree, and all the dogs were trying to get up behind him to get out of the way of this big blue boar. And so I said to Sorby, what are you going to do? Will we take a hind leg off him? And he said, yeah, I'll take your hind leg off you in a minute. So uh, we just propped the pig up against the rock, and they washed their hands as a bit of a creek, and he gave me my knife back. I got on the horse, and I'll see you, I'll see you at Lock and Bar. So that was the story of the pig. <laughs> When you heard my introduction about the big blue boar, most of you people would think I was telling porkies. But here is the proof of Sylvie Eaton with this big blue pig. This big pig, when he took one look at me, he hated me. But I got down in front of him and by hook or by crook I was going to get some photographs of him. Sylvie was jumping up and down and going a bit silly. But when you're taking photographs in the back country like this, you haven't got time to be mucking around with a muster hanging onto the back of a pig. I wanted the pictures, and I told Sylvie I want the pictures, and I'm going to get them. And here they are, a big blue boar, putting on a bit of an act. And of course, the last picture you see here is the ultimate doom of the blue, big blue boar. Another one bit the dust. That was the end of the big blue boar.
about my age, perhaps a little older, early 20s to late 20s. And they were a good team of jokers to work with. They were tough, fit, and able. And we got on as a, as, a, as a gang in those days very, very well indeed. We had those wee camps at Medellin and Cattle Creek and all those places. You couldn't afford to put on an act or think you were clever or smart. Because sure as each, you'd get put in your place. And so the people that I work with were just run the mill fellas. And one of the things that I'd like to mention about about the people that I work with in that way, they're all bloody townies, a whole lot of them. The manager was a townie, went to work when he was 14. Rob Abbott, he's a town. Sylvie Eaton, sort of, well, we're town. Rod Sullivan, he's a town. Jack Longley, he was a town. Murray Cagle, he was a town. And of course, myself, I, I was a town too. And when you come to think of it, Mount White Station was a vast property. And it managed properly and had a show off of it. And it was run by a pack of townies. Told each other that one day. Sure. Never thought about that. He said, Jesus, a lot of potential in you, Joe, because if you had a, got a half a crack at something, you know, early on the base. He said, yeah, well, it's the way you couldn't come. But I thought I'd just mention that. I think it's important that I mention that. Good fellas, strong, tough, capable, to do the work. Ever aware of the fact that when you were at Mount White doing whatever you were doing, safety was first. Safety and the fact that, as I mentioned earlier on, that there was no wastage. You didn't waste anything at Mount White. If you couldn't use it, you put it down for the next day or whatever, and you, you, you were aware of the fact that you were living in an isolated place. Sometimes you couldn't get out of Mount White for three or four days if the creeks got washed out. So you had to do and safety in regard to injuries and stuff like that was uppermost in everybody's mind. Now these musters that I worked with at Mount White, they were tough fellas and used to have to climb around some pretty treacherous country at Mount White, up in the chest basins on the Papity Range, Shingle Hill, candlesticks on Dampier Corner, Big Flora, Little Flora, Mount Vincent, all these places, bottom Papity, treacherous place. These fellas used to do it each and every day with their dogs, climb up, get away through there. They'd get back to the hut in the, in the late in the afternoon and I'd say, what sort of a day? Oh, yeah, had a good day, had a good day. Some of these places that these people went to work, went each day to work and climbing around these bluffs and chutes and shingle slides and treacherous places and ice and greedy rocks getting through the river. It used to frighten the hell out of me, these places. I used to shake in my boots. And people, you could quite freely today say that I was a, a bloody wimp. And, and you'd be, be right there to say that. But the funny thing about it, <laughs> I was only looking at these treacherous places through a pair of binoculars, sitting at the hut door having a parked life bag. But nevertheless, these, these fellas went through these places and they, uh, they did it. They did it every day and they enjoyed it. Now, the other people that were on the station when I was there, there was a station cook and, 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 a, cow, and a cowman gardener. And uh, there was always a bit of a joke about some of these places. Now, why, they said they had three station cooks there. One there, one coming, and one going. And uh, I could write a book, perhaps, on station cooks and cooks that I met around sharing the sheds when I was sharing in the river. That's for another day. And uh, so, but I would say that uh, I pay tribute to the fellas that I work with. They're good jokers, good straight fellas, good honest fellas, and uh, very hard to find a better team of fellas to, to work uh, with. And so that's uh, my little story about uh, the people that I work with at Mount White. These are just a few scenes of Mount White and some of the chaps that I worked with 50 years ago.
This is a picture of Lake Pearson taken off the top of Binza. And this is looking at Lake Letitia from Binza towards the Packety Range. This is a picture of the Polter River. And here we have a couple of the musters up on top of Main Range. Ray Marshall, Sylvie Eden, dogs. The wee bivvy in the, in the Peveril saddle. Quite a nice little area. This is a nice little picture of the East River, Lake Letitia. Rob Abbott said to me one day, I'll catch your fish. I said, where from? He said, where do you think from? Out of the lake. And so he did. This is Rob 50 years later. No fish in that picture. This is taken off Peveril, looking into Flock and Bar. Nice area there. This is Ron, Bell, my brother. He's watching the sheep coming in the summer. This is the top of Peveril, looking due west into the head of the Waimaka Rary. These three fellas, unfortunately, have all passed on now. Three musters at Mount White, Ray Marshall, Murray Cagle and Ron Bell. This is taken off Peveril, looking down at the Polter River at Whale Hill and the Big Flat and the Homestead. This is Main Range, the Candlesticks area. Six and a half, seven thousand feet, treacherous country. The Pacman, I was lucky to shoot a stag one day, taken on top of Peveril. This is a nice wee tarn behind Nigger Hill. It was a great home for little crested grebes and wee teal ducks. It was a lovely, pretty little area, and very, very nice indeed. And Rob Abbott, of course, he used to uh, read a story to himself before he went to sleep at night. He was peering through the rail there one day giving cheeks. I took a picture of him. This is the farthest, most area of Mount White, Dampiest Corner, looking at the Hurunui River of Lake Shepherd. Sylvie Eaton, young fella from Kaikoura, big rough fella, raw bone fella. And these are some fish that were going to die. They were spawning, coming up the river to spawn, so we saved their lives and took them out and salted them and dried them and took them out and ate them out the back of the autumn. This is old Bill, the cook, station cook, Bill Ravenswood, nice old chap. And he insisted that he cook us a fish for our dinner. Made a very nice job of it too. These are other pictures off the top of Peveril. Rob Abbott heading out to Nigger Hill one autumn with a scratch muster. This is off Peveril, looking down into the into the into the polter. Big shingle slide there. I used to take the pack horses through there. And too dangerous for doing that now. Rob Abbott up the top. They were tailing lambs over on the polter flat. All the boys there. And these three fellas got drunk one night and cut each other's hair off. I suppose that's what happens when young fellas don't know what they're doing. This is Ron, the manager, he's thinking, ooh, what did I get these fellas to do today? So we eat and he went out and shoot, shot a few deer one night at Nigger Hill. We got about 40 of them or something, 10 or 12 or something. And these are the boys up on top, they have mustering and the dogs and the snow and everything. And this is a day at Peveril and Ron's up there and he's looking for sheep and up around the place and all tough fellas climbing around. Another nice picture here of the bush looking up the polter, Peach Creek, and looking into the head of the Waimaka Erie. This is looking up the polter, or down the polter, I'm not sure, but it's one of them. And another picture here of looking, looking I think, down the polter, this one towards Whale Hill and Packety Range. These are the boys in the hut on a wet day, playing cards and annoying hell out of me. Couldn't get anything done, they were all there. Sylvie so Eaton and Ron sitting on the rails, must have been smoker. This is over at the wee fly camp, down below the Nigger Hill hut. Only there for a night, and then head away down the down the east to bottom Packety. This is taken up the Polter, up by the Cox River, looking west. Finally, three lovely pictures of Lake Minchin. For those that have been up there, they'll know what this is. And this is just a glorious little lake, full of full of trout and eels, and just a glorious little place to be. Lovely. Finally, we've got one of the makers of the DVD here. He's just relaxing. He's uh, having a drink of whiskey, I think. Well, yeah, well, he thinks he is. 
and we're drawn to the close of the DVD now, so we hope you've enjoyed it uh, as much as we did making it. Thank you very much.